Hi everyone, my name is Chris Colasanti and I'm an associate partner at JBB. And today we're gonna to talk about a new concept in HVAC we call ice heating. Now, I imagine that sounds pretty out there. And so we're gonna spend the next few minutes of this video explaining ice heating and what it means to building decarbonization. Electrification is part of an overall strategy to reduce carbon emissions and it applies to all sectors of the economy. The transportation sector is decarbonizing with electric vehicles. The building sector will need to do something similar. Just like swapping out a gas engine in a car with an electric engine, the building industry needs to start swapping out fossil fuel-based heating systems like boilers with clean electric-based technology. And for most buildings, that technology takes the form of a heat pump. And there are three basic types, ground source, water source, and air source. And in New York, where land and space are at a premium, we almost always use air source heat pumps, but they're big, expensive, and very hard to integrate into a building. This is a huge problem. We can't forget that buildings represent 30% of global greenhouse gas emissions. And if we can't find a way to fit heat pumps in buildings, then we're gonna be in trouble. So today we're talking about a new way of electrifying heating systems with air source heat pumps, coupled with something you wouldn't expect, ice. By combining these, we can reduce air source heat pump sizes up to 50%, which makes that whole cost and space problem a whole lot easier to solve in a building where every square foot counts. Now, the best way to explain this is with a diagram of a heating system. Here we have a space in the building, and this space is split into two separate zones. On one side, we have the interior zone, which requires cooling year round because the people, equipment, and lights, and everything else in there are always generating heat which has to be removed by the HVAC system. On the other side, we have the perimeter zone, which is adjacent to the outdoors. Depending on the season or even the time of day, we either have to remove heat or add heat in this zone to keep things comfortable. Here we have the air source heat pump. It lives on the roof where it has access to ambient air. Its job is to extract heat from that air, even when it's very cold outside, and pull that heat into the building to warm the perimeter spaces during the winter. Here, we have a water-to-water -water heat pump. That heat pump takes heat from the interior space and moves it to the perimeter space to warm it through a process called condenser heat recovery. And the last part of the system, and I think the most important, is the ice storage tank. Let's talk about this ice for a second. Ice is essentially liquid water with the heat removed from it. This transition from liquid to solid essentially makes this ice tank a big thermal battery. Here, we have a water-to-water -water heat pump, and its job is to extract heat from the tank of water, thereby turning it into ice, and move that heat to the perimeter zone of the building. The ice tank, then, actually acts as a source of heat for the building, hence ice heating. So, our electrified building is really doing three things together. First, it captures all the heat from the interior spaces, and gives it to the perimeter spaces via condenser heat recovery. And then if that's not enough to heat the building, it takes ice from those ice tanks and through that freezing process generates more heat to send to the perimeter to heat the building. And if that's still not enough, you fire up the air source heat pumps and bring in more heat even from that cold outside air and deliver that to the perimeter spaces. Now you may be thinking, what do we do when the ice tanks are frozen solid? when the thermal battery is empty and there's no more ability to give up more heat. Well, we need to melt the tanks, and that can be done in two ways. First, you could fire up the air source heat pumps to bring heat into the building and melt the ice, but that takes a lot of energy. The better option has to do with the cyclical nature of loads in a building. There are many times a year when a building goes through heating and cooling cycles within the same day, and on those days, we can use that extra heat that we would have rejected from the building to recharge the battery for free. And in these cases, we like to say the building is able to heat itself. As it turns out, by using ice, you can leverage those cyclical loads quite often, reducing the need to fire up that costly air source heat pump to balance the load. This low carbon ice heating system is a game changer. It makes electrifying heating systems with air source heat pumps cost effective and space efficient and it uses equipment which is available today, which means that we can act on building decarbonization now. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.